Today we're going to be going over the Prius Off-Road Gen 3 front strut spacer installation. You're going to want to start by setting the parking brake and popping the hood, then setting your hood support. Next you're going to want to remove the driver's side wiper arm cap that conceals the 14mm nut that holds the arm on. Then go ahead and remove both the driver side and passenger side wiper arm nuts. Those are going to be 14 millimeter. Next go ahead and remove both of the driver side and passenger side arms. Give these a little bit of push down, a little bit of a wiggle, and they should pop right off. Next you're going to want to remove both sides of the plastic wiper cowl end caps. Um, a flathead screwdriver or a body panel removal tool helps for this. Just go ahead and pry up on one side and then give it a nice firm tug and it should pop free. Next there are five plastic clips and two push pins at each end uh, that hold the plastic wiper cowl. Go ahead and get a flathead screwdriver again and uh, undo these and then pull up on the plastic cowl and it should pop free. Um, it is also slotted underneath the windshield so you're going to want to lift it up at about a 45 degree angle and then pull towards you. Next you're going to want to remove the windshield wiper motor. This is held on by four 10 millimeter bolts. Go ahead and loosen those bolts up and then you're going to want to work your way down to the electrical connection. The electrical connection is held on by four plastic push pins. Um, two of them are on the metal cowl. You can start with these. They're probably the easiest to get to. And then from here you're going to want to remove the wiper motor by sliding it to the left, which would be the passenger side. It's held in by a rubber grommet up against the firewall. Once the wiper motor is removed, you have a little bit better access to the other two plastic push pins. Once again, grab your flathead screwdriver push on each side and they should pop out. Once those are out, you can go ahead and disconnect the connection to the wiper motor itself and set it aside. Next you want to go ahead and grab that same 10 millimeter and ideally an extension. It makes things a little bit easier to get to. There are between 8 and 10 10 millimeter bolts that hold on the metal cowl. Um, you can actually get away with doing 8 of them. I like to go ahead and do 10 just to give myself a little bit more wiggle room. So go ahead and work your way through these, and while you're at it, you can go ahead and fold down the two plastic wings on each side of the AC box. Um, you're going to have to fold those down to pull out the cowl in the end. Um, also while you're here, you may notice that rats tend to build nests in the cowl itself. That's what all that foam is, so it's a good time to clean that out. Um, once I pull things out, I like to use an air gun make sure everything's all clean and blown off since it probably hasn't been blown off since uh, built from the factory. So go ahead and take your time here and be sure to go ahead and pat yourself on the back because now you have access to the strut bolts. Next go ahead and jack up and support the vehicle and then go ahead and remove the wheel and tire. This is going to be a 21 millimeter socket. With the wheel and tire removed you've now got access to the rest of your suspension components. I like to go ahead and start with the sway bar bolt. This is going to be a 17 millimeter. If you have access to an impact uh, you can go ahead and zip these off usually otherwise you may have to use an allen wrench and a box end wrench to take them off. Next you want to go ahead and remove the plastic clip that holds the ABS line on. Grab a flathead screwdriver and pry this out. Then go ahead and move your way back to the 12 millimeter bolt that holds the ABS line and the brake line on. Set these back out of the way so that your strut doesn't get snagged on it when you remove the strut. From here you're going to go ahead and grab a 22 millimeter socket and a 22 millimeter box end wrench to remove the bolts that hold on the strut to the knuckle. Uh, you might want to pay attention to this. If you have had an alignment done where your camber was out, they can put eccentric bolts in this. Um, and so you would want to mark them. This particular car did not have uh, cam bolts in it, so we just went ahead and removed it like they were. Next, you're going to want to put a jack underneath this spindle and go ahead and jack it up just to the point of having pressure relieved off the system itself. Uh, this tends to make getting the bolts out a little bit easier. Uh, these tend to slide out by hand, but sometimes if they're corroded, they won't come out. You might have to get your impact and go ahead and zip them out that way. I personally like to leave one of the bolts in uh, while I take the strut bolts off, uh, the top strut bolts off. 
that way it doesn't fall out of the car and end up smashing something or breaking something in the process. So I tend to try and get one bolt out, leave the other one, and then work my way back up to the top. Now go ahead and grab your 14 millimeter and impact and zip off the three nuts that hold on the strut. Be sure to save these nuts. It is ideal if these are factory nuts to put them back on top even after the uh, lift strut is installed. Go ahead and lower down your jack, relieving pressure off the system and your strut should pop right out and out of the way. So this is probably the most important part of the procedure. You wanna make sure that you have not only the right spacer for the side, but also the right orientation. So passengers mark the P, drivers mark with a D. Uh, you will want the arrows facing the passenger side and the letters up against the firewall. Once you've got this, go ahead and take the nuts that came with the kit and put those on bottom. Unfortunately, we are not able to get a torque wrench on these because of this strut spacer itself. Uh, these are locking nuts though, so go ahead and tighten them down with a box and wrench as tight as you can and they will be more than fine. Um, after you've done that, <clears throat> go ahead and put the strut back up into the vehicle, making sure that the proper orientation is still there. Uh, once again, the arrows facing the passenger side and the letters up against the firewall. Now you can go ahead and put the 14 millimeter nuts back on top of the strut. Uh, this is when if you did have the OEM nuts, it is ideal to put these back on top and you will not need the washers that come with the kit. If you've already had your struts replaced with something other than factory and do not have the OEM nuts, then you would want to use the washers that come with the kit um, to make sure that you clear the knurl on the stud themselves. Next you're going to want to line up the bottom of the strut with the steering knuckle. The driver's side tends to go in pretty easily, the passenger side having the longer axle tends to be a little more problematic. Um, if it does give you a hard time, a pry bar, a rubber mallet, and a punch tend to go a long ways. Once you get these holes lined up, go ahead and put the 22mm bolts back in, and then go ahead and slide on the nuts. From here you're going to want to grab your 22mm socket and impact, and 22mm box end wrench, and tighten these down. and then you're gonna to wanna to torque these to 177 foot-pounds. Next, go ahead and put a jack underneath the knuckle and raise it up until the sway bar bolt lines up with the strut hole. Go ahead and put that sway bar bolt in and uh, put on your 17 millimeter nut. We can tighten this down and you're gonna to wanna to torque it to 55 foot-pounds. Go ahead and work your way back to the ABS line and brake line and take your 12 millimeter bolt and line them up. You're going to want to make sure to get these lined up properly. There is a little bit of a clip in back. It has to kind of seat into it and then go ahead and torque this down. From here you can lower your jack and move it out of the way Then go ahead and grab your wheel and tire and put it back on the vehicle. From here you can grab your 21 millimeter socket and impact and tighten these down in a star pattern and then I like to work my way around a second time just in a circle. It's also important to torque these down to 80 foot-pounds of the torque wrench after the fact. This is a good last opportunity to go back through and double check your work, making sure that the arrows in the logo are facing the passenger side and the letters are up against the firewall. This is also a good time to go back through and retorque your nuts, making sure that they are at 37 foot-pounds. From here you're going to want to reinstall your metal cowl. You're going to want to insert this a little bit lower in back and higher in front, uh, kind of shift it side to side. It takes a little bit of finagling, but it should get in no problem. Uh, make sure that all of your bolt holes are lined up and then grab your 10 millimeter bolts, your 10 millimeter socket and impact. Um, I like to go ahead and uh, get these inserted and finger tightened just to make sure that you don't cross thread them. Also be careful when you're torquing these down not to over torque them. They are a very light grade bolt <clears throat> and so they will break if you over torque them or over tighten them. You're also going to want to make sure and flip up the plastic wings that you flipped down when you removed the metal cowl earlier. If you forget to flip these back up, you will see a reduction in cooling and heating efficiency from your AC and heater. Uh, so be sure to flip those back up. Then you can go ahead and go back through your 10 millimeters with your impact and tighten these down. From here we can go ahead and reinstall our windshield wiper motor. Remember that? rubber grommet that we had to slide out of earlier. So you're gonna go ahead and reinstall it in reverse fashion. So you're gonna be working it from the left to the right, making sure that it pops in securely. Then you can go ahead and grab your electric connections and pop in the plastic clips. Uh, there are four of these, two on the metal cowl, two on the wiper motor, 
and then be sure to reconnect your electrical connection to the wiper motor itself. From here you can grab your four 10 millimeter bolts and I like to finger tighten these and then go ahead and grab your 10 millimeter socket and tighten them down all the way. Next go ahead and grab your plastic wiper cowl. Um, remember these clips against the windshield, you're going to want to insert those kind of that back end first um, and then you've got your plastic clips up front. Once you've got everything lined up they should snap right into place and then you're going to want to go ahead and grab your two plastic end caps. Go ahead and work your way to the driver's side. Uh, these take a little bit of finessing to get into place but the, once you get the clips in properly just go ahead and press down and they should seat themselves and snap into place and go ahead and do the same thing on the passenger side. Now we're going to go ahead and reinstall the wiper arms. Uh, you want to make sure to get these as close to where they were from the factory as possible. Uh, typically you can see the marker lines on the windshield where they were before. Go ahead and get these seated and then get your 14 millimeter nuts. Tighten those down and then you're going to grab your plastic wiper nut cover on the driver's side and go ahead and snap that in place. Finally go ahead and put away your hood support and lower your hood.